requiring love to come from my spouse was the most selfish thing I'd ever thought about. No human being should demand love from anybody else. Nobody takes news of divorce <laughs> well. Family and close friends, everybody has an opinion, you know, and, but I think for me, I'm really blessed um, because you don't just, I didn't wake up one morning and say, I want to go. This is something that, uh, situations that's been going on for years, over five, six, seven years. And to finally say I'm walking, I got to a point whereby there was a lot of support system for, for that. Uh, people were not happy, but it got to a point whereby family and friends were like, if you're going this route, we'll support you. Because at this point, we can't ask you to stay if you're unhappy. Five things I was not enjoying in marriage that I'm enjoying now. Hmm. Number one, becoming me. There's no way they can understand your value if you do not find someone who values you. Of course. Love is in the air. Love is a beautiful thing. Don't get it twisted. Love is beautiful. I would love to get another shot at it, but you know, I, I shot at it with a different perspective, a new insight, understanding. You know, now I understand it's not really about emotional connection. It's really about alignment of vision, purpose, you know, partnership, and getting to explore life together. And I would really want to have that opportunity with someone. There's so much love inside here to give, to express, and to explore. But this time my eyes are sharp. I'm trying to make sure that it's someone who, you know, values, you know, we share the same, uh, we align, you know, in value system, in spirit, in body, in soul, in soul, in soul. Yeah, that sounds poetic. <laughs> wow, okay, married tips for Gen Z. Number one, be prepared be really prepared. It's not uh, something that you used to, it's not an achievement trophy, okay? It's the same way you prepare to be a doctor, engineer, lawyer. You need to know what it, it involves. You need to know what it takes to become a partner with another human being, so be prepared. Number two, understand what marriage institution is all about. Okay, I even think that should come first. You should understand what it's all about, then you get prepared. Number three, it's not for family and friends to believe that they have achieved on top of your head. Don't let me, don't be pressured. Don't let any mommy, daddy, uncle, auntie say, I we want to see you marry in front of us or we want her to carry her children. No, you should be ready. And when you are, you know it. Okay. And uh, the fourth thing is get all the resources. Learn. Nothing is better than knowledge. It's better than I wish I knew. Yeah. Okay. Okay, the new generation dancers, who do I think will go far? I am not the one to predict anybody's future because I, I don't have that say in anyone's life. What I would say is structurally, just like saying a banker looking at another banker, uh, upcoming banker and say, with the way you're going, you probably you know will have a great career. That I can say. I think um, Everybody has a path that they've crafted for themselves. Whatever path that they are diligent towards, committed towards, and dedicated towards is the one that they will get. So I, uh, off the top of my head, um, there are quite a number of people that are doing things differently and are pursuing it differently. I am for the business of dance, the commerce, the economics of dance, and growing it apart from the art. Some people just want the art. They just want to be performers, trendsetters. That's what they want to be. So you can you look at the Pokoli. Pokoli's vision and direction towards dance is toward totally different. It's an entertainer, a lively, jovial person, more of a trending artist, you know, and he's still evolving in himself. So he's someone that, you know, has different uh, dimensions he can evolve to. Sarah Chips, my baby, you know, she uh, had her moments with me when she was in Nigeria as well, when she was growing as an upcoming dancer. When she went to America, I did what I could do also to support her, you know, dance career there. She has also decided to create a path on her own that I'm very proud of. So everybody has a path. Uh, you know, not everybody's going to do it the way Kathy is doing it, you know. But for me, I am here to make sure that this industry is sustained, is sustainable for all of them, regardless of how far they want to go. So Gen Z, I'll say keep pushing, keep thriving, don't quit. I know it's not easy to be a dancer. You are not a full stool of anybody in the entertainment industry. You are actually the reason why people saw, people are seen, and celebrated. 
I say go to? What are you doing? When I say go to, like go to for plumbing, go to for. Like you're really your pal, you're like a really good friend. Okay. Uh, who are my industry pals? Ah, there are many, but let's say very very close people. Um, I'll say I have YJ, uh, is DME the actor, uh, Peter, P Square, very close. That's that was my pal. That one's family. Uh, yeah. Um, okay, are you talking dancers now or just artists? I'm part of a lot of people on party gong. No, I'm party gong. There are plenty. You understand? But you know, there's some people that you just meet them and you vibe that moment. And there's some people that you don't see for a while, but you know that that person got me. So I have people like Ayo Anima Shaun. Those are my bros. Uh, DJ Jimmy Jat. You know, um, dancers like Sarah, uh, Wally Robert, Aison Wiki. Um, to make sure you fool Poco, what's the way we jam? Poco, <laughs> when we jam, is such a humble sweetheart, and um, yeah, so there's a lot of people that I really connect and vibe with, so I, it's hard to like pick. I don't make no verse, I don't call your name because now somebody you say they call my name, so I'm not your pal. Trust me, you are, you know, you are if you know you are, so I shouldn't. I'm just in the inside this room, trapped in the closet, yeah, so.